The images of the basis vectors suffice to determine the components of a tensor. But how do we determine these images if you have only some geometric description? In this video you will see a few examples how this can be done. First example. Suppose we know that our tensor T mirrors vectors in a plane V uh, with normal, here is our mirror, so a uh, mirror with normal E1. So we are basically mirroring in the x2, x3 plane. So how do we get the components of our tensor T if we use the standard basis E1, E2, E3? Well, in that case what happens if we mirror our E1 is mirrored to this vector over here, which is exactly minus E1. Both E2 and E3 are in the mirror, so they're not changed. The image of E2 is just E2 and of E3 is just E3. So how do we find the components of our tensor? Then we have to express this T E1 in terms of the basis vectors E1, E2 and E3. Well, the T of E1 equals minus 1 times E1 plus 0 times E2 plus 0 times E3. So our first column then becomes minus 1, 0, 0. Similarly, for the second and the third uh, column, uh, the image of E2 is E2, so that is 0 times E1 plus 1 times E2 plus 0 times E3. And similarly for the third one. So there we have the matrix of our tensor T with respect to the basis E1, E2, E3. And this basis is important. That's what we'll see in the second example. Same uh, mapping, again mirroring, uh, mirror on the same position, uh, mirroring in the x2, x3 plane, but now we choose a different basis. Just leave e3 at its walls, but instead we use e1 prime, e2 prime uh, as, uh, as drawn over here. So what happens now? Now if I mirror e1 prime, I get a vector e2 prime. So the image of e1 prime equals e2 prime, the yellow one. If we mirror e2 prime, the image equals e1 prime. So the t e2 prime equals e1 prime, and nothing goes on with the third one. So what do I know? The t of e1 prime equals e2 prime, so that it equals 0 times e1 prime plus 1 times e2 prime plus 0 times e3 prime. So now the first column of our matrix T in the basis, the prime basis, so the matrix T in the primed basis becomes 0, 1, 0 for the first column. And for the second column, so what happens with E2 prime? So that is mapped to 1 times E1 prime plus 0 times E2 prime plus 0 times E3 prime. So this second column then becomes 1, 0, 0. And third column, nothing changes. So from these two examples, A and B, the tensor is the same, so the mapping is the same. However, the representation, the matrix is different because we use different basis vectors. So if you want to find the matrix of a tensor, you always have to specify the basis you are using. Now let's do a third example. If we uh, rotate counterclockwise around the x3 axis, over an angle theta, so we start with our E1, we rotate it, we get the R of E1. Now what's the R of E1? We go cosine theta in the E1 direction plus sine time in the theta in the E2 direction. So there we are. So what is the image of E2? E2 is rotated over here. So in order to get the image of E2, we have go minus sine theta in the E1 direction plus cosine theta in the e2 direction, so there we are. So what do we get for our matrix? Now the image of e1 equals cosine theta e1, so we get a cosine theta plus sine theta e2, so we get sine theta plus 0 times e3, so we get a 0 over there. Image of e2 equals minus sine theta e1 plus cosine theta times e2, so that's why we get the cosine theta over there, and a 0 over here. And then third column, 0, 0, 1. So there we go. There we have the matrix of our rotation if you use a standard basis. Of course, you could use again another basis here as well, 
and then your matrix changes a bit. However, your tensor uh, is independent of your basis, only the representation, the matrix representation, that one, those numbers, those do depend on which basis you have chosen 